I am not a scientist. I get accused of being a scientist all the time. I'm um, not a dermatologist, not a doctor. I don't even play a doctor on TV. <laughs> I'm a mathematician. And actually, I'm a mathematician who's been in healthcare for 32 years. Now, most people think that mathematicians solve problems with just numbers and formulas, <clears throat> which is true. But really, we just love solving problems. And every once in a while, a problem does not show up as a problem. Every once in a while, you'll have it show up as an unexpected result. And sometimes these unexpected results can be a huge breakthrough. What you just put on your hands was a huge breakthrough. So we were working on these topical therapies to reduce hospital-acquired infections. You guys have probably read a lot about that in the news. <clears throat> and we, were ha we had looked at it and we said, if we could get 20 to 25% reduction in these hospital-acquired infections, that would be significant. But what if I told you we were achieving 80% reduction? Well, truth be known, I really couldn't understand how are we getting that? So I reached out to one of the leading research corneobiologists <clears throat> in the world. A corneobiologist, I didn't know what a corneobiologist was, and I'm hoping you don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, they study the outside layer of your skin. It's called the stratum corneum. And this research corneobiologist, his name was Dr. Peter Elias. And Dr. Elias is an amazing man. He's been published over 600 times. And I couldn't understand what was going on, so I reached out to him. And he came in, and he started to speak with me, and he said, Steve, the success you're seeing makes complete sense. Now, when you, when, I remember when I was having an earlier conversation with Dr. Elias, he would use like 10 or 12 words in a sentence. I was Googling seven of them because I couldn't figure out what he was saying. <laughs> but he was really patient with me. You know, mathematicians, we ask a lot of questions. And uh, he, he said something. It's what I want to really share with you today. <clears throat> he said, Steve, you do know that you could not walk on planet Earth without your terrestrial human spacesuit. And I said, human spacesuit? I've got a human spacesuit. Now, Dr. Elias is so much smarter than I am. I'm sure what it sounded like was, are you telling me I got me a spacesuit? <laughs> but he was very patient with me. He said, not only do you have a, a human spacesuit, he said, you actually put on a new one every 28 days. And I said, well, being a mathematician, I said, if I live to 75 or 80, does that mean I'm going to put on 1,000 spacesuits in my lifetime? He said, that's about right. And I said, wow, that really just took me back. And one of the things about mathematicians is we love elegant solutions. Not just a solution. An elegant solution is it's complex, but yet it's very simple. And that's what your human spacesuit is. And what he was explaining to me is the reason why we had such a breakthrough. What you put on your hands today was because we were restoring, repairing your human spacesuit. If we're able to do that, we can have these huge, huge successes. So that's what, why we're having that breakthrough with these very sick patients in intensive care units. So my question to you today is, what would happen if we took what you just did, what would that do to your everyday life? Could we improve your life? So what I want to take you through <clears throat> is why do we have spacesuits at all? How do these spacesuits work a little bit? And then well, why does it matter? So let's think about Matt Damon first of all. Matt Damon on Mars. You're a lot like Matt Damon, except for you don't have the breathing problem and the food problem. Um, hopefully you all saw this movie. Uh, but you have these hostile um, assaults that are coming in at you every day, uh, just like he does on Mars. UV radiation, pollution, um, wind, humid conditions, dry conditions. Um, even really pathogens. We talked about that a little bit, right? These bugs that we have in hospitals that are now in your schools, gyms, home. Don't want to scare you too much, but that's what it is. So the first thing you have for your human spacesuit is we want to keep the bad stuff away. We want to protect you. Second thing is you're watertight. And you don't think that's a big deal, but going back to high school, you've forgotten 70% of you is water. So it's very important that we maintain your water supply. And your outside of your suit is really important to doing that. You know, Dr. Elias told me one time, he said, Steve, he said, if you weren't managing your water supply, you couldn't have the miracle of life on dry land without it. It's a good point. But here's one thing that Matt Damon didn't have in his suit. He didn't have sensory capabilities. So your human spacesuit, you can feel things. You can feel being touched, heat, cold. You have all of those things. He didn't have anything close to that. But here's the question. Why do you only 
Or why don't you only have one suit? Why do you have a thousand? So think about Matt Damon. If he wore the same suit for 70 years, what would that suit look like after being on Mars? NASA would have issued a lot of duct tape, wouldn't they? So that's one of the main reasons why you have this. So let's talk about how this works. This is where it gets interesting. So you have two parts to your suit. Part that's you, part that's not you. The part that's you is your stratum corneum, a lot of the work that Dr. Elias did. The microbiome is more of a new science. This is the collection of organisms on your body. And you've kind of been grown up with bugs are bad. Well, I'm, gonna t I'm here to tell you bugs are good. And we'll take you through it. So let's think about the part that's you, stratum corneum. I want you to think about a brick wall. And that's basically the way your skin works. It's about 20 to 30 layers, just that outside layer. And these bricks are held together with mortar that has lipids and proteins. And this brick wall has a lot of redundancy. So think about something trying to get through your skin. It's got to go through 20 or 30 layers. So this redundancy is amazing. But what's really neat about this, and Dr. Elias really made a lot of these discoveries, is that you have 10 defensive functions that are working on your behalf. Your UV defense. Uh, we talked about that being in Utah. Um, your mechanical defenses, your chemical defenses, even your antimicrobial defenses. And so you have these uh, antimicrobial peptides that are constantly coming up to the surface on your behalf, 24-7. You have 40 of them. So that if you get a pathogen on you or some assault, they're always going and working on your behalf. So let's talk about the part that's not you, your microbiome. You've been picking up bugs ever since you were born. In fact, four to five pounds of you is not you. I don't know if you're aware of that. That's in your gut, on your skin. In fact, a lot of people say you're actually more bug than you are human because it's 10 to 1. For every human cell you have, you have 10 microbes. These, 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 when we think about the microbiome of your skin, it's a little bit different than your gut. You're used to you know, Greek yogurt and everything that you're doing. You're, you're a little bit interested in that. But we're talking about your topical microbiome. It's very diverse. You have over a trillion organisms on your skin right now, believe it or not. I hope that doesn't gross you out. Uh, <laughs> and, these, and I want you to think about your, your microbiome. You actually have a lot of microbiomes. Think of your, your body like a map of the United States. Your feet are like Miami, and your forearm is like Arizona. Dry, moist. You're going to have way different sets of collection of organisms. But these organisms all work together on your behalf. And this is the, the new science that we're talking about is that your bacteria, your fungi, they, they actually are in chat rooms, and they actually have conversations with one another, and they work on your defensive nature, even communicating with your own body. And they have these memory cells so that when they see an assault that they've seen before, they go, oh, I've seen that before, and they start to attack it. So this is that part that's not you, part that's you, and they come together. But for them to work, this is where it gets really, really fun, for them to work, your body has to be acidic. The issue is, you're not acidic throughout your whole life. So those thousand spacesuits don't look the same. So to kind of take you back to high school, if you can think about pH, uh, acidic is down around 0 or 1, um, neutral is 7, alkaline is like 14. So you're a little bit acidic. So when you're born, you're born more neutral with a pH of around 6.5. It takes you four to six uh, months to become acidic. So you don't have the same defensive properties. That's why infants have cradle cap or uh, even eczema. And then as we get to be adults, now your skin's become acidic. And those 10 defensive functions are working really well on your behalf. And here's what's interesting. All the superbugs that you hear about in hospitals and in the newspapers, they all grow at a pH of 7, more neutral. But you're acidic. They can't grow there. As long as I can keep you acidic, I can keep you from infection. It's about that simple. But then you get to be my age, 56, and I stop creating these antimicrobial peptides, and my pH starts to go up. And as my pH goes up, I start to lose my defensive functions. A lot like when I'm an infant. It's one of the reasons why I wrinkle. But I always tell everybody, it's, it's my spacesuit that's wrinkling, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, this, but this curve has consequences. And the consequences are, gets to the point of, why does this matter? Well, at any one time, 25% of us are having disorders with our human spacesuit. 25% at any one time. And disorder just sounds annoying. It's not just annoying. There's a lot of disabilities. 
if I'm over the age of 60, 90% of us are going to be having, are going to be having disorders with your human space suit. 22,000 of us are going to go into a hospital this year. It's probably one of us. You're not going to have an infection. You're going to get an infection while you're in a hospital. And we're not going to have an antibiotic for you that works. 22,000 of us are going to die every year. And that number continues to grow up and up. So it matters. Taking care of this human spacesuit is absolutely critical. So I have to be honest with you. We do have a problem. As interesting as all that is, we do have a problem, and it's pretty significant. And I'm not sure how we got here, and I'm starting to understand the solution a bit, but here's the problem. If we've known about this science for over 40 years, why has no one told us? Why do companies continue to sell us products, even procedures like laser peels, that are bad for our human spacesuit? It makes no sense to me. The shampoos that we all use this morning have an alkaline of about 12 or 13. It's going to take you six to eight hours for your human spacesuit to become alkaline again, I mean acidic again. You now know your human spacesuit to work has to be acidic. Or think about the hand sanitizers that you've been using. Hand sanitizers, while they kill the bad bugs, guess what else they kill? The good bugs. Totally destroys your microbiome. And so now you're more susceptible to infection than where you started. Makes no sense. Cosmetics, you're using synthetic ingredients that are destroying your microbiome. It's the same story. And we continue to do this. So what would the impact be if all of us in our lives became more aware of the thousand spacesuits that we had, we took better care of them? What impact would that have in our communities or even global health? I want you to consider this. This is a map in 2050. It's just 30, almost a little less than 35 years from now. There are going to be 10 million additional deaths worldwide because of a lack of an antibiotic. People all over the world are going to get an infection, we're going to go in, and we don't have an antibiotic to treat you. We're going to have more people dying from this than cancer in just 35 years. Do you think having an acidic spacesuit properly maintained could change this map? Of course it could. Consider this, 35% of all of our asthma cases are due to an infant who had atopic dermatitis, eczema. Remember we talked about that? What's the first thing that we do with an infant in this country? We give them a baby wash that has a pH of 12 or 13. And what should we be doing? We should be trying to encourage them to have, get their skin acidic sooner so they don't get eczema that is linked to 35% of all of our asthma cases. This conference is about dreams don't work unless you do. And I really want to flip that around a little bit. And I want to be more collective. Dreams don't work unless we do. I'm the CEO of a life sciences company. We're committing all of our resources to creating therapies that are addressing these gaps in whether it be hospitals, long-term care, even home health. But it's not enough. I need you to partner with me and be more aware, be, take a more active role in your family, in your community, of the products that you use, products you don't use, like hand sanitizers, hopefully you know that now, it can make a huge, huge difference. So here's the takeaways for today. Two things. One, you walked in here and you didn't realize you had an elegant human spacesuit that has incredible capabilities. Hopefully you understand that today, right? The second thing is, if you'll take better care of the thousand life suits that you're going to be given, I promise you, I promise you, that your spacesuits will take incredible care of you. Thank you.